Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at the new Enscape 3.2 release specifically for Vectorworks. Now this is quite exciting, Enscape have been releasing lots of new uh, versions recently, had one back in September and another little tweak as well recently, but some really nice new features in the 3.2 version, uh, one specific one that I wanted to highlight in this video. So I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. We're nearly at 10,000 subscribers, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, please join up. I'll be making lots more videos in the next uh, few months and I'll look forward to seeing you on the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Now we're going to be looking at the new release of Enscape 3.2 and there's a couple of really cool features that I want to highlight. Now to do this I'm just going to kind of show this project that I've been um, working with Vectorworks on. I did a webinar on this with Twinmotion, the other real-time rendering software I'm a big fan of. Um, but I'd like to show you some of the nice new features of Enscape with Vectorworks. So here we are with the Vectorworks model. You can see it's a really nice model for a gallery. And all I'm going to do to launch Enscape, as you would know, is go to the Enscape renderer, which is now down in the tool sets. And I'm simply going to click Start Enscape. So while this loads up, um, Enscape have been busy, you know, developing the software quite a bit recently. Um, in the last few months, we've had the release of uh, Enscape 3 with the new use of interface changes. And we had Envision where I did some presentations on that using Vectorworks and it was fantastic. It's a very, very nice tool, but it's developing very, very rapidly. Now here we are, you can see we've got the model already. So I'm gonna use, use my mouse wheel to zoom in and do remember that if you hold shift down, it will go a bit faster. Um, so let's have a little spin around and look at how that looks already. Now it's already looking pretty good. And you'll notice that I've actually got a few Enscape assets in the scene already. Um, so I've pre-prepared this, so let me just dock this over to the side and let's just get Vectorworks docked in that side. So what I've actually got, if I turn off this layer here and I go to uh, Synchronize Views, you'll see those Enscape assets disappear. Now, the new feature really, the main new feature is a really nice headline new feature. We now have an asset library integrated directly into Enscape itself. Now this is a big, big plus, I think. Um, because there are times when rather than having to place things like people and trees in the Vectorworks model and then come back to Enscape, you just basically want to do it directly in Enscape. So we can easily do this now just by clicking, uh, dragging them in, and you'll notice it's very easy, it's very rapid. I can just sort of place a few people. Let's just plot these guys in here, a few people there. All I need to do then is click Apply Changes to send those changes uh, to the program. Now I have noticed at the moment, um, for some reason on my version, these place slightly in the wrong place, um, but basically that's okay because we can actually click on them and just move them into the position they would need to be. So I'm not sure whether that's a little bug or whether that's just my uh, sort of early version that I'm using, so I'm sure that's going to be something that will be sorted shortly. But basically you can see how rapidly it is, we can move those people around, and we can basically get them in our model. Now what's really nice is when we click Apply Changes, you'll notice that if I was to go back to uh, the Vectorworks model, just click that over there, those changes are amazing, they're actually two-way. So those new Enscape assets have now been added directly to Vectorworks, as you can see. And we've talked about this before in earlier videos, but the Enscape assets are very low polygon, and they're basically just proxies, really. And what they do is get translated into the high quality assets in Enscape. Let's go back to our Enscape view. Let's have a little look around the view. And let's add a few more items to our scene. So let's go to uh, the search, type in the word tree, for example. And you can see we already get a really nice set of assets here that we can drag in. Um, let's click and drag in a couple of trees. And let's just place couple of these trees into the scene. We might actually just tweak that and place a few over here. We'll just click apply changes and they'll get placed into the scene quite nicely. So if I do pop back to my Vectorworks model once again, let's have a quick look at this. You'll notice that back in the Vectorworks scene, if we go full screen, those are the new Enscape assets that have just been placed. Now, a great little tip I would suggest is if you use the one tool in Vectorworks, you can basically select by object type. And this is really handy because what I can now do is select all the Enscape assets with a single click 
you can see they're all highlighted here, Enscape Assets. And then basically I can just move them all to maybe a layer that I would like them to either be hidden or shown as required. Um, so you can see I've got a few other assets in here that I've been developing already. So this is really, really nice. Uh, it's a very quick way to add them. The other nice thing is um, when you're in Vectorworks, if you do want to, you can actually sort of move these assets around, of course, and precision kind of place them as well. Just copy a few of these trees, for example. Just hold the control key down and I'll duplicate that. And then all I need to do um, is just really whiz back. I think we've got a bit of an overlap here with that tree there. Let's just delete that one there and that one there and that one there. So all I need to do when I'm ready uh, is click back onto the Enscape window, go full screen, and you can now see that those um, assets that we moved in Vectorworks have, have moved in Enscape as well. Just watch the placement of them, of course. I think I've got that one a little bit wrong. Okay, so um, very, very nice aspect to Enscape so far. And I really do like the rendering styles in Enscape. So I just want to touch on this once again. You can see at the moment I've got the outlines on. Okay, so once the outlines kick in, it makes it look a lot more uh, graphical. So very sort of a bit more sketchy and early stage design. Uh, without the outlines on, you'll see it looks a lot more realistic. And basically we can kind of move in to our model and we can kind of like scroll through the times of day. I love the lighting that we get in Enscape. It's super nice, very, very realistic, uh, very rapidly. So at the moment I'm in um, synchronized view with Vectorworks. So for me, one of the really nicest things about the integration with Vectorworks and uh, Enscape is this beauty that you can kind of move around in real time in Vectorworks if you want to and adjust your view. And you just immediately see that over on the other screen. Now do bear in mind I'm on one screen today. Uh, but I would normally kind of use Enscape on my second screen. So that would be um, excellent. I could control Vectorworks full screen while working on the second screen over there. So let's just pop back into Enscape and look at the kind of quality of these views. So I love the fact that, as I said before, if you hold down Shift and the right click, you can move the time. You can also do this with the U and the I key on the keyboard. Um, so you can just adjust that sort of real time sort of shadowing and rendering. That's a really nice view. And if we like the look of that view, let's just tweak it a tiny bit more. Um, we can simply click to save a screenshot. And you'll notice it just takes a few seconds to render out that screenshot. Um, and if we were to go and review a couple of the screenshots I've created, I've got one here with a really nice sort of white card look. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, here's another one. And this one has these sort of graphical edges on, a bit more kind of graphical and drawing-like. And then we've got this new one that we just rendered out in a few seconds as well, all at 4K um, in a very sort of nice real-time rendering. So for me, this is a really nice uh, benefit of uh, Enscape now, the real-time sort of integration that you get. Let's just pop that into full screen. And now we've got this wonderful asset library built directly in. So as well as the Enscape asset library that we can use directly within Vectorworks, which is nice, um, what we can do is click on that person there. And let's say we just want to drop her. Now with the automatic plane, this is really easy can basically just place her directly into the model and wait a second and she'll pop up and appear. So I don't have a problem with this. I think this is a really nice way to place assets quite rapidly in the scene um, using Vectorworks. And the good thing is in uh, Vectorworks, they're low polygon proxy assets and you can see they come through really nicely. Okay, so you can see with the trees, they're very nice actually. Now they do move um, when you're actually sort of in the uh, navigation mode. You can see the leaves blow and the trees move around. When you go to a still image, they, they stop, which is absolutely fine for stills, of course. But when you're kind of moving the lighting and so on as well, they just rotate around for you. So really, really nice. Let's frame that view up. Now, another nice aspect of the connection here with Vectorx is that we can actually click onto the view manager, uh, which is actually this one here. And when we're ready, we can actually create this view now, this, let's just call this uh, view 10. I don't think I've used 10 yet. And what that will actually do is not only will it create the view in Enscape, if I go back to my Vectorwitz file, you'll see, it will have created the view back in here. So if I go to my save views, it's just telling me that the view management is active at the moment. Um, so do watch out for that. You just need to basically just pop back into Enscape 
and when you're ready, disable the view management. Okay, so let's go back to this tab. You can see I've got my new save view here and I can just sort of double click on that to recall that view at any time. And of course, there's lots of other save views in here as well um, from this sort of demonstration model. So I really like this, the fact that I can basically place things sort of accurately in here. Again, let's sort of search in this way. Let's search for tree. Let's click on our tree and let's see if we can just drop one of those directly into the scene. So if you can, I mean, doing it in Vectorworks feels a little bit more accurate, um, but you can see very, very rapid as a way to populate your models. So that's one nice aspect to the new Enscape, the ability to uh, place the assets either in Vectorworks or in Enscape. Um, so placing them in Vectorworks, it's nice and accurate, as you can see, it's quite rapid as well. And the other advantage perhaps here is you can hold the control key down, of course, and sort of duplicate, um, so that really works well. Okay, so when you're navigating around the views in Enscape, um, personally, I do find it a little bit tricky to begin with, um, but it just takes a little bit of kind of getting used to. Now, a really helpful thing is just pop open the help panel here, pop open on the side, and then you've got all the keys in here as we've talked about before. So we've got the WASD keys and so on, but it does go very slowly. So two tips here, either hold shift down to go a bit faster or go control to go really fast. And that will really kind of speed you up as you navigate around. So once you kind of get the hang of this, you know, holding control down uh, or shift down will kind of speed up the navigation quite dramatically, you can see. Um, if you do want to, you can also hold spacebar down. That'll, that'll take you down to eye level. Okay, so that means you can kind of navigate around at eye level, and walk around at eye level. But do remember you won't be able to move up and down once spacebar is enabled. Um, so you can see at the moment I'm clicking... Uh, Q and E and I'm not moving up and down, I can only go sideways, so just press spacebar again, just sort of move that height up as well, a little bit more. Okay, so that's cool. Um, we've also got uh, the basic time of day, as we've talked about with shift and the right click of the mouse, or U and I, as you like to do it on the keyboard, but you can do it a little bit more subtly perhaps with the mouse, I'd say. So I really like that view, just take a little snapshot. I do tend to take quite a few snapshots as I go, um, and if I do really, really like the view, then once that's rendered, I'll show you. All we need to do is, let's just pop back to Enscape, and we will just let that render up. You can see that's nearly rendered up now. That looks lovely. Okay, so all we need to do to save that view is just go up to this little icon here, View Management, and let's just create that view. Once again, in Vectorworks, let's just call this View 11. Click OK. And if I was to go back to Vectorworks now, just for a second, let's just minimize that one. Pop over to our Vectorworks screen. You'll notice that here we go, there's view 11. So now look, it's really nice. I can double click the view here. Um, and if I do have my synchronized button on, that will change over there. So very, very straightforward. All these different sort of nice views and things you've got. Now another quick view I want to show you on view changes is these keys down here, the standard views, and these are really nice. Uh, so we can basically just click onto the keyboard and just sort of set that into standard views if you like. So we've got the elevations which look cool. That's a rear one. I'm not getting much sun on that facade at the moment. So let's sort of swing around to a different time of day. Going through the night time, hopefully the sun will come up. And it depends on the solar angle, to be honest. So let's go and look at the other elevation here. You can see very nice effect of the sun coming across. So do remember to use, that's a really nice one with the water. Let's move forward a bit here. Use our control key to speed that up. Look at that lovely water. Looks absolutely lovely. Get closer to the building. Let's pan across a bit. That's a spectacular view. Let's adjust the lighting. And when we're ready, we just sit, click on to screenshot. And that's the beauty of Enscape, it's the speed at which you can kind of set up multiple views super rapidly uh, with a very, very nice quality render. If we want to, let's just adjust that time of day. We'll go back into that view a minute. Let's just move forward nice and quickly using the control key. And let's just adjust that view. I'm just keen to get really in nice and close, sort of frame up the building. That's an absolutely lovely view. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll click View Management, we'll click Create View, let's call this View 12, and then that's saved in Vectorworks for when we want to come back to it. So with all these kind of nice new features, um, we can basically just really kind of quickly work up some lovely visuals using the best of what Enscape has. 
and I think the best of what Vetworks offers as well. Um, there was one other feature that I did want to show you on the asset library placement, which is really nice. Um, so as well as this mode here, the single mode, you can actually go to this multiple mode here and place multiple modes at the same time. So I think what I need to do is just kind of get myself a nice view. Let's kind of go for that. And all you need to do is drag in a few of the assets that you would like to, to use in there. And all you do is just click those. When you're ready, you can click um, confirm placement. You can see at the moment it's just kind of created a randomized one so you can make it a bit denser. Click regenerate if you need to. And when you're ready, confirm the placement to place those assets and apply changes. So a very quick way, apart from this offsetting issue that I'm experiencing at the moment, it works really, really well. So everybody, let's have a final review of a few of our images we've created just in this very short tutorial, just on Enscape 3.2, just looking at a couple of the features and how nice it is to use Vectorwitz and Enscape together. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and look forward to seeing you for the next one. All the best. Bye bye.